Well, to get started, I always like to talk about longevity. And the human being has the genetic potential to live healthily, to be 120. I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute. Unfortunately, Americans do a lousy job when it comes to longevity. Our average lifespan in the United States is 75.5, about half what we're genetically capable of. In 1990, when the World Health Organization examined the top 32 industrialized nations on Earth, the United States came out 17th. There was actually 16 other countries whose peoples live longer than we do. We rank 19th in healthfulness. That meant that there were 18 other countries whose peoples live longer than we do before they develop heart disease and cancer and diabetes and arthritis and osteoporosis. We rank 23rd when it came to live births and first year survivability of babies. And we rank dead last, 32 out of 32, when it came to preventing birth defects. Now what all this means is we have the highest priced healthcare system in the world but not the best. It also means that we have the most envied healthcare system in the world, but not the best. We have the most technologically advanced healthcare system in the world, but not the best. Well, I had a good friend by the name of Christopher Bird uh, for many, many years, over 20 years, and Chris uh, was a best-selling author on books on organically grown food. He was an expert in this subject, and uh, I was always trying to give him vitamins and minerals, and he refused to take them, and he'd tell me, Doc, I bring my own cooler. I don't eat any uh, hotel food. I bring my own organically grown food, and so I don't need to take vitamins and minerals. Well, I was changing planes uh, again in Atlanta, had an hour to kill, picked up the local newspaper, and guess whose obituary I found in the newspaper? Chris Bird. Of course, again, he was a best-selling author of books, uh, The Secret Life of Plants, The Secrets of the Soil, and he died at age 68 from a ruptured aneurysm, a type of stroke, seven and a half years before the average American dies. And he led a pristine life, lived up in the mountains, had an organically grown garden, collected herbs, you know, like Yule Gibbons and ate wild hickory nuts and all those kind of things. And because of his belief, he died of a copper deficiency. And I'll show you in a minute that copper deficiency causes ruptured aneurysms. And it's just a tragic thing that, that people have so much to give and die at less than half their genetic potential for longevity. A lot of people say to me, Doc, I don't need to take vitamins and minerals and trace minerals because I use herbs. Now, herbs are not nutrition. You have to understand that herbs are not nutrition. They are great plant medicines. Uh, they're safer. They're more economical and in most cases are more effective than prescription medications that doctors will give you, but they're plant medicines. If you have diarrhea, they can tighten you up. If you have constipation, they can loosen you up. If you have hypertension or high blood pressure, they can bring it down. If you have a fever, they can bring it down. But don't expect to get enough calcium or selenium or boron or copper or vitamin A from herbs. Well, I've been doing biomedical research and clinical research in animals and human beings, and I can tell you no matter how you look at health and longevity, whether it be in animals or human beings, there's only really two concepts you have to deal with. Concept number one I refer to as avoid stepping on the landmines. This is where you don't want to throw away your healthy physical body wastefully. You don't want to smoke. Don't abuse alcohol. Don't do drugs. Don't jog down the highway at 2 o'clock in the morning wearing an all-black ninja suit. You're going to get hit by a truck mirror, right? Whenever a doctor says, here's our options, never say, doc, whatever you say, you're the, you're the doctor. When a doctor says, here's our options, what you want to do is say, look, I want copies of all these records and tests, I want copies of the x-rays, and go visit three other doctors and three other hospitals. You want to talk to 12 of their living patients that had gone through this procedure, <laughs> talk to them, see if you really want to do this. I mean, you do this for your driveway and your roof and your fence and your yard and all that kind of stuff. Why not for your own physical body? That's concept number one. Now that you've avoided the landmines, you're in a good position to do all the positive things that you need to do to go on to live to be over 100. 